Hey, Dave LaCalle with Head Games Builderworks. Today, we are going to do a teardown video on the quickest synchronized manual car on the planet, Head Games Equipped. Check it out. This head is for a good buddy of ours, Vlad. Vlad works for National Speed. And uh, all the videos you'll see Vlad's car right here. Vlad's car is a really cool quick silver car and uh, it's it used to be a street car it kind of still is it's really beautiful if you guys are ever at a track and you see the car please check it out so we did this head five years ago this head's very very old uh, it's actually hand ported we hand ported it um, well before we actually digitized our and got our CNC port so the car has been as fast as 759 184 miles an hour at World Cup Two years ago, the head blew up and uh, we refreshed it. We put some valve seats. Uh, well, I should say the engine blew up. It hurt a seat. We put a valve in it, put a seat in it. He went going. So now we're two years past that. Uh, we just actually refreshed it before last year. And uh, now he's some other issues. What are we gonna find? So five years ago, we did our hand port. That's right, before there were CNC ports, we did everything by hand, and this is uh, one of the examples. I wanted to take the time to mention that a lot of people think that a CNC port is better than a hand port, and that's actually far from reality. A CNC port is basically a hand port. It got digitized, so it goes on the machine, and they check, or I should say it has a probe, and it probes the whole port, and it makes a map of it, and this way you can just spit it out. But you have a casting, and the castings are not all the same. So not every head's gonna be the same. Uh, but by hand, if you're a very proficient hand porter, all your heads should be the same. So I got a valve seat on this port here, and all the rest of them. This head's been milled many, many, many times. Uh, you can tell that, oh, sorry, right by here. You can tell it's been milled because this material here is usually thicker. And um, I would say there's probably about 30 to 40 thousandths off of it at this point. And, um, but here and there, it still went 759, 184 miles an hour, fastest synchronized manual car in the world, Supra. And you can tell by the combustion chamber, the thing is running pretty fat, but it is also running very, very good. I don't see anything here that really throws us that we need to, um, to do anything besides a valve job and a freshen up. Looking at the top of the head, I don't see anything, any kind of wear. Now, it doesn't have a lot of time on it. This thing got refreshed uh, just last season, right before World Cup and cam journals. Everything looks just so, so good. I, I really can't complain about anything up here, uh, at least on the head side. Intake cam caps, more the same. I don't really see much going on here. There's a little bit of scuffing but not really anything uh, to really worry about. Like there's no deep scratches. There's nothing that wasn't kind of already there. Like you see the scratch here, but that was already there. Um, and he didn't tear the motor up this time. But on the exhaust, different story. You'll see a lot of scuffing. And you see here, there's like some deep marks in the journals. Uh, this is nothing that a little bit of polishing won't take out. So we're just gonna take out the high spots. We're not gonna like make it bigger, we're just gonna make it flatter. Um, but I did notice that there was a little bit more discoloration than the intake side. Looking at the valves, I, uh, again, I just don't see much, now it doesn't have a lot of runtime on it, uh, but these valves actually have been in the car for five years. And unless there's no wear here, we have no wear, let me use this pointer here. You have no wear here. The 45 looks really, really good. There's a lot of margin left. I don't see any signs of float, so there's nothing on the top of the valve. There's really nothing on the 45 that's abnormal. I don't see any heat going up the valve. We're gonna look at the exhaust valve. See the exhaust valve looks really good. There's no discoloration, so usually if there's a lot of heat, it'll go purple here, but I just don't see anything going on. But we had a whole bunch of problems on the exhaust, and uh, let's go over that. So what we had here, we had a bunch of bent exhaust valves. You can see here how, I just refaced this one so you can see how, you see how the color goes black right there. So it goes silver, 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 black. So there was actually a bunch of these that were tweaked and 
Uh, we don't know because, as I said, it doesn't really look like a lot of heat was in the in the stem. But when you start getting to this level, the issue is keeping an exhaust valve in it becomes start. It starts to become hard. So when we get to that level, we have tried many, many things. Uh, we've went up to seven millimeter exhaust stem with a, and this is a stock size valve. Uh, so we went up to seven millimeter exhaust stem. We've tried Pyramet. Pyramet's the same stuff they use in top fuel. Uh, we've tried a couple different grades of Inconel basically, and um, basically nothing works. So what we have used that does work is a six and a half millimeter from GSC, it's worked great. It's actually worked better than uh, going to the seven mil and uh, going into a custom, uh, another custom exhaust valve. I can also attribute a lot of what we're seeing here is we switched over to a GSC 5086 conical spring kit. It is a bad dude. It's the same spring we use. Uh, we used it in um, Angel Granis and White Rice and all the fast guys are pretty much using this spring and it, it just, it offers so much spring pressure and a great rate and you can run RPM, you can run pretty much anything you want, but this is a 70 plus PSI valve spring and uh, we just have nothing but good luck with it. The buckets, we have a little damage and you can see here some of them are really, really, really beat. Now this is only on the exhaust side, so the intake this is one of the intakes. You see like the intakes, very clean. There's really nothing. You can run something across it, you don't hear anything. But on the exhaust, you guys hear that? You can see it too, it sounds divoting in. And that's a really rough deal because we're, we're using a GSC S2 cam. Yes, an S2 is actually set the world record at 750. So for you guys who think you need big ass cams, uh, here is a perfect example why you don't need them. Uh, but the the issue we're seeing here is all these have a lot of wear and only on the exhaust side. So what could that be? Now there's two issues that we could go over. One is that the car goes 750s and it's a stick car. So a lot of problem is that the 2J puts the oil through the camshaft and it splashes the bucket. And because it does this, and you also have contamination, the car runs on ethanol that you're gonna run out of viscosity, but you would think that it would do it to both sides, not just one. And although we have replaced buckets in this thing before because of the inertia of launching the car and then the oil splashes back and uh, it's something that we have fought on many, many cars. And then we, they put a dry sump in it. When they put a dry sump, it actually takes it all the way and now the car gets proper oiling. Um, but we, we definitely have something else going on. I know it's gonna be hard to see this guys, but you see this area right here. So the bucket goes into this hole and it can hit this, this little ledge that's right next to the spring pocket. Now it's a casting. So what you're gonna have is that little piece is gonna be different on every head. You'll see here how they're different heights. I guess the best way you could look at it is if you looked at the way that we did the clearancing for the camshaft to the bucket, this bucket here is deeper than this bucket here. On the intake side, that piece does not exist. There's like nothing um, anywhere here that it would hit. It's only on the exhaust side. I also don't think that just because we clearance it, it's, I think it's still going to be a problem until he goes to a dry sump, which uh, well, I just got news that he is probably never gonna go dry sump in this car because he bought another head games equipped car from uh, it's Jamie Carter's old car. Uh, it was always one of the fastest cars in, on the planet, one of the fastest Supras in the world for many, many years. And he bought that car and he's gonna put a stick in it and it's time to go fast. So I think it's gonna take until that time for all this to kind of come full circle. So I don't have the camshafts here because I sent them to GSC to make sure that my synopsis was correct. And what GSC noticed was there is a lot of scuffing just on the nose of the cam. So the rest of the cam looked great and there was a lot of scuffing. So he is actually, uh, Greg from GSC is actually who told me to look for how far down the buckets go because the cam, the, the cam doesn't have that much lift. It would not hurt the bucket. 
um, or I should say, wouldn't shouldn't normally hurt the bucket, and it also shouldn't coil bind the spring because there's lots of room in it. Uh, so there's really only one place else we could look. Testing that theory, we're going to put a camshaft in here, um, and it doesn't hit. So that can't be the problem. So another theory could be, is the head clearance enough? Now this is an R2M, it's just something I had sitting around, and R2M has more lift than the S2. You can see there is plenty of clearance to the camshaft from the casting. Now a problem with an S2 is that, uh, and I see a lot of failures going on, is that people just pop them in the head, and the problem that we see is that the head is so, uh, well there, again it's a casting, you're going to keep hearing me say that, so the castings are all different, and now the distance to the camshaft, the distance between the lobe and the cylinder head are all going to be different. So that's why you see a lot of times that a, a cam will eat up uh, just a couple buckets and not all the buckets. And we, it, it is a clearance issue because that they're so all over the place. So, but we clearance these heads for the camshaft and so we don't have to worry about that. Um, so that knocks that theory out. It's especially prevalent for you guys with the VVTi heads or any JDM head, uh, also the GE VVTi head, that you clearance the head for the cam. And what I mean is that the distance from the casting to the lobe is a lot closer on those cylinder heads than, uh, say, a GTE head or a regular GE head. So always, always clearance those things. Although they do not hit, they are so close to the casting that what will happen is that oil will get whisked away from the camshaft because I said the distance is so close and then it's going to strike the bucket dry and when it strikes the bucket dry the bucket's going to die. So I wish I wish you could talk to these things and say hey man what's wrong with you I want to know so you don't have to try to figure out the problem but so far what I think is the problem is not in the camshaft it's not it might not even really be in the head. It could be the installation. Um, I really don't know. So if he didn't use the right lube, and I know that um, he had to take the cam out because of uh, something that, like we had to ship him a bucket and stuff like that. So um, I just don't know really what happened here, at least at this time. I haven't figured it out, um, but I know it's not in the valve spring. I said we use a 5086. It's a bad dude. We use it in like everything that's fast and we don't have this problem. And it's isolated only to the exhaust. So if this thing could just tell me what's wrong with it, I would love it, but um, this is not the, this is not reality. So reality is that we are going to just keep moving it down the road. We're hoping to find the problem. I don't, so I don't see float in the valve. I don't see, uh, and in the camshaft, uh, GSC told me they only seen an issue in the nose of the cam. So the, if it was floating, it would beat up the acceleration side of the camshaft and there was only damage in the nose of the camshaft and they're totally reusable. I don't know where to go from here. Um, maybe we'll make a part two if we figured it out, uh, but that won't be for a couple months. But I just really just want you guys to see something you guys don't normally get to see and that's a world record setting cylinder head. It still works. We're gonna replace the buckets. We're gonna, we're gonna replace the, the broken valves um, and actually, the bent valves might be part of that. So they bent the valve and now you're gonna have a valve that's not gonna move. It's not gonna move the way it should and uh, that is a theory, but we didn't bend all the exhaust valves. So like not everything's adding up here. I don't really know the, where to go from here. Um, yeah, that's gonna be us for today. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles. Wow, tear the tires out there in the Supra and plant some. It just keeps... <laughs> Turk going top in for Yip to Shinko, 759 with a 5 at 184 miles an hour. Doing a little bit.